So last year we got this thing running tip top shape and then I parked it right where it is. Went inside, the next day I come out, no gas. I have a gas leak. I suspect it's coming from one of the, oh, oh God. Ha! I suspect it's one of the gas lines to the carburetor, which I've been looking up top here. I don't see anything wrong, so it must be underneath where I can't see it. First, we'll take off the air box here, which is pretty easy, normally. Okay. Yeah, you still can't see anything. Get these clamps off. Boom, baby. This is a brand new line, so I don't suspect it's gonna be this. I think it's gonna be one of these yellow ones that were from years ago. Look at this, guys. I don't even have to go any further, because look what I just found. You see this little, let's see if my camera can get on it. See that little silver, Silver spot right there. Hold on, I'll just rip this off. Boom! That's where it was ripped. Oof, look at that. It was clearly separated right there. And this is just falling apart in my fingers. So this is old line. All I gotta do is replace this, and we should be golden. And here is our new fuel line. Right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that'll last another decade or so. I'm gonna break out the Leatherman here, which I'm really thankful for. A uh, viewer, actually, years ago for Christmas, Gave me this Leatherman. I use it all the freaking time. There she be. She's done buggered, man. That ain't happening. We need about yay much. We'll go a little bit further. Get our new line in here. We'll start with the bottom. That's a harder one. Give this video a thumbs up if you want this to be my main sled this year. Because I might be selling the old players of salt. Look at that brand new line. Mm. Yeah. We'll throw in a little dab of that liquid love, you know what I mean? <laughs> little hot sauce. I think I have enough in there. I'm a little nervous. I don't want to put too much, you know, and then have it all leak out if something does happen. But I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm about 114% sure that that's what the issue was. So give it a little prime. After you run out of gas or you clean your carbs you got to wait for the fuel to get through the lines you know and that pull cord is so short i think my hernia is finally coming out i gave it some more pulls off camera and this is what happened should have seen that coming so now i gotta take the exhaust off, get to the pull assembly. We gotta take that apart, put a new rope in there. Smoking. There she is. I don't think I have any pull rope with me here, so I'm gonna have to go buy some. Probably pick this up tomorrow. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to fix this freaking recoil. So as you know, the first step to doing this <coughs> is to uh, Take the snap ring off without poking your eye out. Job well done. Remove this, remove that. Here's the tricky part. You gotta lift this thing up without letting the spring all come jumbled up because then you got serious issues. Yeah. There we go. There's our dead rope. Throw that in the woods. Look at this. Brand new roll. 100 feet true blue heavy duty commercial starter rope. This should last me about one season. This is always so scary. Yeah. Now, which I should have done first, I know. No yell at me in the comments. Hey. Boom, look at that, huh? Like a 90s Nordic track. I was actually told we might get snow today. Boom. Come on now. All right, so I'm gonna try to be quiet because my neighbor has some guests over. So we're gonna do this quietly as possible. The pull rope tube is right there, ends about right here, and then feeds into where our pull handle is. Snake this thing up through there. Oh man, it's looking like a mozzarella stick here. There it is. Yeah. Boom, baby. Undo that, and we good. So now the fun part is actually starting this thing. I don't think we actually started it last time, right? No, we didn't. Might want to throw our exhaust back on here. Okay, 
we got it going, but I did hear some crackling going on, which I had flashbacks to my Polaris. Really scared me. I think it's coming from the exhaust, so there may be a mouse nest in here. It didn't want to idle. I had to keep priming it. There may be something going on in here. I would not be surprised if it was a mouse nest. It sounds like there's something fluffy in there, like a nice mouse nest. This would be a nice time to have compressed air, but unfortunately I don't. So... It does smell a little bit like burning mouse nest when I throw the torch in there. The other option would be to start a fire and throw it in the fire and let it sit for, you know, 20 minutes or something. Which is what people do. People actually do that. Maybe I'm just super paranoid because my Polaris burned down in the forest that one day. Could be wrong, but I don't want to take any more risks. Yeah, baby. Got the exhaust out of the fire. Doesn't sound like there's anything in there. Okay, before I bolt it all up, before I put all the springs on, we'll see if it's idling on its own power. Well, it didn't, uh, it did the same thing. Stay tuned for the next video of uh, trying to get this thing running. Look at this setup, huh? No hernia today. Ah, the old MXZ 583. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is probably one of the most popular sleds on the channel. So we're gonna keep making videos with this. Man, this looks so shiny. Looking good. Where we left off last time is this thing uh, just not running. Oh, check this out. Here's a new mod right here. Got the old shoestring on here to keep the hood open. I cleaned the carburetors, I went through the fuel lines, and nothing. Here's what I suspect. The fuel pump. The lowest part of the fuel system is the fuel pump. Now here's what I'm thinking. If we take our flashlight and we look down in there, you may not be able to see it, but I can see some cloudy little bits of water in there. Quite a bit, actually. I don't know if it's my gas cap. I did put that you know, nice uh, permanent cover on it, but it's just, water might have gotten in there. So I'm thinking water got sucked into the fuel pump. We couldn't start it, A, because the gas was terrible and filled with water, but also it was really cold those few days before I worked on this thing, and I'm thinking water got in the fuel pump and froze in the fuel pump. I'm going on a limb and saying that it's the lowest part of the fuel system, and that's where water would collect, right? So I just yanked the fuel line from the gas tank that goes in the little inlet right there, and I'm noticing no gas in the line, which is very interesting because uh, I know it was submerged in the gasoline, and if there's nothing in there right now when I was pulling it over, then perhaps we are correct in our assumption that the fuel pump is bad. It shot off like a rocket. Look at that, so easy. All right, so I don't have a proper gas tank to dispose of this, so I'm gonna put it in a bucket for now until I get a good one. Oh, something fell out of there. Well, I'm gonna throw some fresh gas in this, swish that around, try to get more out of it. Whoops. So I'm gonna speed through this because you saw it in the last video, but first we get the air box off, then we take the carbs off. Ah! The one thing I love about these old sleds is they're so easy to tear apart. There's the fuel pump. Let's rip this thing out. Get my Terminator, it says T3 on it. I got these for Christmas when I was like 10 years old, whenever Terminator 3 came out in theaters. And <laughs> I've been using these pliers ever since. Yep, here's the juiciness. Let's throw this in this bucket here. And let it leak out. And I'm curious just to see. Oh yeah, look at that junk coming out of there. Look at that. Junk. Okay. All right, there we go. Let's carefully take off these gaskets, which may be an impossible task. Oh yeah, that's that ain't good. We're in need of a new fuel pump or a rebuild kit. Scanning the interwebs here, and it looks like a uh, new fuel pump's pretty friggin' cheap, 25, 30 bucks, so I'm just gonna order up a new one. She's the one for me. Yeah! Two little thumbs. Finally came in, I had to wait for like two weeks to get this from China. Oh 
Oh yeah! I slapped that puppy in right now. See, it's the, 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 the. I have to say that I love this machine. One of my first sleds actually was this, was this same chassis. It actually is a Formula 500. Love that thing. I still think about it. I actually still thought I saw it the other day on Facebook Marketplace, but the guy didn't respond to me, so I couldn't buy it. But I love these sleds. Hopefully this is the right fuel pump. Again, coming from China, you never know. Just to have kind of a visual here. It, they look to be identical, thankfully. Yeah. Got that brand new Chinese fuel pump on there. So now we gotta slap the carbs back on. Airbox going in. Wow, holy shnikes. Now, can someone explain to me how this sled was born in 1997, lived its whole life outdoors, and somehow the seat is immaculate? That is, that never happens. Everything is back on. I do have a little bit of gas, not much. I'll throw everything I have at it, and then uh, we'll try to fire this puppy up. I want to know down in the comments if you guys want me to keep this thing and ride it like it's my main sled. Let me know. Ready for a workout. I can already tell it's going to be a sweaty endeavor. Right. So I think I just need to put in more power, a couple more power shots down the cylinders and get the fuel running back through the lines enough where about here is the primer and then it pumps it into, you know, so let's, uh, let's keep going. Power shot round three. Was it enough? No, it was not. Okay, so I've been sweating over here, pulling and pulling and pulling. I finally got the primer to work. I, w I looked online on the forums and somebody said to just keep priming it. Just keep punching it for, one guy said he did it for 15, 20 minutes. So I only did it for about four minutes and it eventually started to work. But that is not our biggest issue now. Our biggest issue, once again, is our recoil. I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking I wore a piece down inside or something because it will retract, but you can't pull it. It doesn't grip at all. Yeah, so stick around for part two. We're trying to get this thing running.